Good evening. Good evening. Glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here too. As the old saying goes, I'd rather be here than in the nearest jailhouse, right? Or the nearest hospital as far as that's concerned. So uh, we have a lot of people that are sick uh, that we're going to need to pray for. Yeah, I know. Uh, Miss Debbie's here. She's in the back working, but I think she's got the same bug everybody else has. So, um, Um, if you want to put it on your list, um, Sierra's family, you need to pray for her and their family today. Everybody's sick in that family. The baby had a temperature of 101.3 today. So you want to remember her, remember uh, Sarepta's mom, Jan Halver, uh, remember Roxanne. Roxanne is sick. And remember Sean. Sean is sick. Now, where did the preacher go? I was going to have him do something. He's, he's skipping out. Sean, S-H-A-W-N. Okay. Uh, Matt, okay. Yes, I put a star beside that. If they're already on there, I put a star beside that. Before we start, is there anybody that you know that we can take off of the prayer list? Where is that? Okay. Yeah, I see that. Okay, that's great. That's great news. Uh, Ed? Where? You want to put her on or off? On, okay. Now you get to go to the principal's office. Yeah. Okay, anything else anybody else that we need to put on or take off? Yes, Sharon. I know. I thought I did get it right this week. Okay. All right. Let's do it this way. Yes, I got it all. Here's what we're going to do. Lisa, you have Inez Bird, Sierra and the family. The baby's temperature is 101.3. You have Sarepta's mom, Jan Halver. You have Roxanne. You have Roxanne is sick. You have Sean O'Brien. She has a bug. And you have Matt. Ida's Matt. Okay. You think he has the bug too? Perry, if you will take, uh, or I'm sorry, Pastor. You, we're going to go backwards tonight. Pastor, you take from Matthew Ray up to, 
we can take Frankie Waybright off of there, so we're not going to use take that one off. Up to John White Jr. broken arm. How's John White Jr. doing, by the way? Okay, so those are the ones that you have. Perry, you go from Rosemary Water up to Ryan Venatter, inclusive of that. Sharon, Galena Torman, up to Mark Sowards, including Mark Sowards. Uh, Connie, uh, Ruth Smith, up to Donnie Savasia. Up to Donnie Savasia, on second column over. SAUV, yeah. Uh, Scott, Billy Joe Ruger, Rougier, if you're in France, it's Rougier. Billy Joe Ruger to Cheryl Morris. Ida, from Vicki McCord up to, on the other column, up to and including Patty Love. Cotton, Shirley Lewis, up to Barbara Kearns. Teresa, Bill Jeffers, up to Matt Greger. John, S Sandy Gray, up to Ray and Brenda Epling. Uh, Vi, Sheena Estep, up to Perry and Sharon Duke. They need the prayers and we need to practice. Uh... Ed, if you'll go from Phyllis Deem up to Stephen Call. Chuck, Mark Burris up to Stan Booth. And Rick, if you'll go from Ed Blankenship all the way up to the top to Joanne Ellison. Okay? That way we get everybody prayed for. Okay? And I'll, I'll finish. Yes. That's Lisa. Yeah, she's got it. Uh... It's, that's Vi's, it's Vi's mother, right? Or she just needs prayer. She's 90, what? 95 years old? 98 in September, so she's 97. Yeah. Gosh, I forgot. What, what are you finishing up with, Connie? Okay, so you got Billy Joe Ruger up to Cheryl Morris. Uh huh, all the way up. That gives you Cheryl Morris, Brian Pierce, Virgie Perry, Stephanie Plymel, Connie Pullen, and Billy Joe Ruger. Okay? Jenny, you're just in time. You have a prayer sheet on the table. Yeah. Yeah, we got them. Jenny, you got uh, the unsaved one, uh, salvation on the prayer sheet. Okay? Okay? And I'll take the rest of them and the ones that's on the back. And then I'll close, okay? So let's pray. Well, you have, I thought we just pray silently. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll pray silently and then I'll close, okay?
that you let us see another day. Father, thank you for letting us be here at Lighthouse tonight. Um, Father, we ask that you be with us tonight. You speak to our hearts and our minds. Father, as we've remembered everyone on the prayer list tonight, we are reminded that you know everything. you got the plan. Uh, for everyone on this prayer list, we want your perfect will to be done. It's not our will, but yours. We have faith in you, Father, and although things may turn out not the way we want, but it's the way you want, and help us to realize that. Um, Father, we ask now that you would uh, be with our ad advocacy team as they pray for missionaries and support the missionaries. We pray that you'll be with them. Father, for trail life as it seems to be getting off the ground and guys are getting started and had 21 uh, guys last week on a trip, we pray that you would be with them, be with RJ as he leads, um, that it would lead, lead in a manner that those boys may be able to see Jesus Christ uh, in nature, in RJ's life, and Father, may they just come to know you as their Savior. Father, we pray for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, Father, when we think we have peace, there is no peace. And uh, we just ask for, for your peace for them. Uh, Father, we all have unsaved loved ones. Sometimes it's hard for us to pray for unsaved loved ones. Uh, but Father, we want you to Send your Holy Spirit to them in the convicting way that they would be convicted of their sins. Stop and take time to realize where they're going to spend eternity if they don't come to you. Father, we pray for our church, for our lighthouse. May we grow spiritually, and as we grow spiritually, we'll also grow numerically. Help us to share the gospel right here in our neighborhood and our surrounding area. And help us to be the church that you want us to be. Not what the pastor wants, to, wants it to be. Not what the deacons want it to be. But we want our church to be what you want it to be. Father, we pray for our service on Sunday morning. You'll already begin to prepare hearts, prepare the message, prepare hearts for the message. Um, Give us hearts of flesh and not hearts of stone. Father, we may be receptive to what you have to say. For our daycare, uh, Father, what a blessing it is. For our daycare, to be here at Lighthouse and the parents that have entrusted those little ones. Father, we pray for our daycare staff, for Jenny and the staff, as they labor from day to day. And some days it's rougher than others. But, Father, it's a joy, especially on graduation when we see them. And the joy and the smile they have on their hearts. We pray that those little ones may go home. And for mom and daddy are not saved, we pray that you would be with them. And those little ones would share the gospel in a certain little way that, that they may be saved. Father, we pray for April's closet that's coming up uh, as we prepare to hand out uh, clothing to those that are in need. May we not just pass out clothing, but we might pass out the gospel. Uh, Father, that they might see something in us that they want and that they need. Father, we pray for our nation. Uh, bad shape. Uh, we know you said the times are going to wax worse and worse. But Father, we're depending on you to help our nation and be with our nation. You said if we would call on your name, then you would hear from heaven and heal our land. We ask for healing for our nation. Father, we pray for our spiritual renewal, spiritual awakening right here in Hurricane, in Putnam County, West Virginia, in the United States. We pray for that. For our leaders, that they might turn to you. Thank you for our medical personnel that's been battling and battling and battling and uh, Father, we just thank you for them. Uh, 
give them wisdom, give them knowledge, and help them to realize where that wisdom and where that knowledge comes from. It's not anything they've learned in a book. It's a gift that you've given them. So thank you for that. Father, we pray for our military that strives every day to keep us free. Be with those guys and gals that's overseas. For our missionaries, uh, as they spread the gospel, uh, again, Father, we ask that you prepare hearts for those that they come in contact with, that they may see you. Pray for those in the Ukraine who are battling and battling and battling. We pray uh, there's, for those Christians that are in Ukraine, that they may hold fast to your word and hold fast to um, the gospel. Father, we pray for those parents of those Texas shooting victims. Um, kind of hard, Father, for them. They Sometimes they probably just don't understand why. Uh, but Father, we, we put, the, put it in your hands. Be with them. Give them an extra measure of your grace and all these things. And for all these people on the prayer list, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. 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 P.S. Lord pray for Mr. Baker's family. Yes, he was a good man over in Nicholas County. He was a good man. Okay, we're talking about, and we've been talking about reshaping my lifestyle. We talked about nobody really likes change. Nobody really likes change. I didn't, I hated it when the school system changed from junior high school to middle school. It was just, that's just not the way to go. But who am I? I'm just a peon that <laughs> was in the classroom every day. But nobody likes change. And the first thing we talked about in changing our lifestyle or reshaping our lifestyle was turn around. And who did we talk about? On the first lesson, John the Baptist. We talked about John the Baptist. And what was his message? Re repent. Change your mind. So he, we had, he talking about, he would preach for people they needed to change their lifestyle. They had to change their lifestyle. And in the second week, last week, we talked about mental attitude mental attitude how's your PMA you're already forgot how's your PMA boy am I enthusiastic about the Lord so how's your PMA there you go good better and we talked about a familiar passage of Scripture. We talked about the Beatitudes and what the kingdom people were going to be. And every Beatitude starts out with the word blessed or blessed, which means happy. So if you want to be happy, you need to do all those things that's in the Beatitudes. Be a peacemaker. Poor in spirit. All of those things. And we also took a little survey to find out where we are and I think we're not as far along the ladder as we need to be, according to the surveys. Um, tonight, we are talking about, ooh, this is a good topic. Tonight, we are talking about moral issues. Aren't you glad you're not speaking tonight? <laughs> tonight, we're talking about moral issues. And we could go on and on and on, but we're going to take a time. Let's discuss this a little bit. What are uh, some of the moral issues of today? What? Abortion. Uh, how do we call it? Uh, cohabitation. Okay? Drugs. Gender change. Any other moral issue? Other moral issues? What, do what, Ed? 
God being kicked out of our country. Um, yeah, I've got this in my notes. First thing happened, God got kicked out of what? Schools first. And we let one woman do that. Let one woman do that. Madeline Murray O'Hare. Dr. Falwell did everything he could do, went on national TV and everything he could do, but did we listen? No, we didn't listen. We didn't listen. And uh, I remember back in 1974, if you were living in West Virginia, and especially if you were in Putnam or Kanawha County, we had the big textbook uh, issue. The reason I remember that it was because I was doing my student teaching at the time, and I knew what I believed, and uh, I had to go. I had to cross. Pick, there was picket lines in every school in Kanawha County. Marches down Capitol Street, and the whole deal. It was a it was a big big deal, and I was scared to go into the classroom. I was scared to go across the picket lines because of the uh, textbook controversy. But at least. We had some people in Kanawha County that stood up for what was right. And it ended up being a successful fight. But amongst all these things that's, that's happening in America today, who's to blame? Or is there blame? Is there blame to be had? Okay. Of course we know that Satan is to blame, but who else is to blame? When we say we, what are you talking about? Mankind or Christians, right? Born again, Bible-believing Christians. We are to blame. Uh, Chuck, we're going to... All these things, are, just for simplicity's sake, and I told you this last week, we're going to look at the New International Version, just for simplicity's sake. Because I'm a simple guy. I'm speaking to simple people. So we're going to look at it as, as simplicity's sake. Chuck, look at Judges 21-25. Pastor used this last week and the week before last. In those days Israel had no king. Everyone did as he saw fit. Now, just for simplicity's sake, let's change it a little bit. Let's change those to these. So in these days, America has no king. Okay? Because everyone does as they see fit. Everybody is doing as they see fit. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And yet we wonder why things happen. Moral issues. So let me ask you this question to start out with before we get into the scripture reading. When was the last time you got so mad about injustice or a fraud? When was the last time you got mad about an injustice or fraud? <laughs> Every time the politicians open their mouth. Agreed? Every time you sit in the legislature, you walk out. Curtis, that's good. When a woman lets her baby get run over. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay? Um, I really get angry when I see, go by the gas station and see gas at $4.99 a gallon and everybody in Washington, D.C. is driving electric cars and think that's going to solve everything. But I don't know what they're going to do if electric goes out. They're just going to sit there. I mean, you know, and they don't realize that the coal, the fires West Virginia is the 
same electric that runs their cars. So I'm saying to myself, how dumb are they? Dumb. Dumb and dumber, as the movie says. Anyway, well, uh, when was the last time you did something about it? Ouch. I don't know about that. That is the number one thing we do. You're right. That is the number one thing we do for direction. Yes, as Lisa said. Yep. No. Yes, we should have Christians. I know you're hitting my soft heart. I can. I don't think I could get elected, or I would run. But uh, Christians running for mayors, Christians running for school board, Christians running for county commission, Christians running for this that, and we need to be careful who we see, who we vote for, and make sure we back up and have a good background on what they do and where they are and what they believe. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is, is a Christian that's out there running for office, so we need to be careful about what we do. Okay, let's look at Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. A familiar, it seems like every time pastor speaks on Mark, I've got to go back and speak on Mark too. That's okay. Or Mark, Mark. We'll get it. It's like the old edge. The more you hear, the more you learn. So, just a different aspect of this. Mark 11, we're going to begin with verse, chap, with verse 12. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. No. When I was studying this, I stopped and I thought, why did Jesus have to go and look at that tree to find out any fruit? He knew it didn't have any fruit already. But he's using it for a different uh, an example. We'll get into that here in a few minutes. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat from the fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer from all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When the evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the same fig tree withered from the roots. And Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. So, we're going to look at both of these things, the fig tree and the money changers, and the cleaning of the temple. So how does the story of the fig tree relate to the cleaning of the temple. How do those two relate to each other? Okay. Okay. Both of them were not... I knew a preacher's wife would come up with, a, with this solution. Both of them were not 
bearing fruit. The fig tree surely wasn't going to bear any fruit. And they sure wasn't doing what was right in the temple. Matter of fact, they were making a mockery of the temple. Okay? So you got the picture? Both of them are not bearing fruit. Uh, so, if the, if the temple was not bearing fruit, in what ways did the Pharisees cover their fruitlessness with flashy foliage? How did they... They did what? What? Foliage? Well, foliage is just the term for leaves. And I... No, no, no. In what ways did the Pharisees cover their faithlessness? You know, they were pretending to be faithful, but they weren't. So how did they cover it up, basically? How, how did they cover it up? They were there. How else did they cover it up? The royal garments. How else did they cover it up? Okay? Okay. Oils. How else did they cover it up? Uh -huh. They made it look like that they were going to take care of the Gentile people. They made it look like that. But they really weren't. They were only in it for what? For the money. For the money. They were trying to, they were selling all those sacrifices for money. And uh, they were profiteering on the sale of these sacrificial animals, and they were selling these sacrificial animals in a place where only the Gentiles could serve and they could worship. So if that's the case, why would that especially anger Jesus? They were selling these sacrificial animals in a place where only Gentiles could serve and could worship. Why would that anger Jesus? Okay, that's one good viewpoint. Anybody else have a view? Yes, Jesus did get angry. I'm trying to repeat all this because they can't hear you over YouTube. So, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, keep going. I didn't mean to do it. Anger is not sinful. Right, anger but sin not. Okay, anger towards sin is very biblical, okay? Chuck, if you will, bring up um, Isaiah 56, 6 through 8. They were what? They were actually turning people away from God. Here's what Isaiah said a long time before this even happened. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship him, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and hold fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Not some, for all nations. The Sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. So it made Jesus angry because the Gentiles were being left out. That was part of his anger. The Gentiles were being left out of the blessings that they could have because of the profiteering of the Pharisees. Okay. Um, what was Jesus threatening when he called the temple a den of robbers? All right. They weren't trying to give the word. They weren't trying to do what was what was 
specific in the law, were they? Discounting the sacrificial animals. Anybody else have an idea? Yeah, they thought it was just for the Jews and not for everybody else. Okay, let's look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 9, Chuck, 9 through 15. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal and follow other gods you have not known, and then come out and stand before me in this house which bears my name and say, We are safe, safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Go now to the place in Shiloh where I first made a dwelling for my name and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. Sound familiar? Sound, does it sound like, I mean... It, Sound like the United States of America, too? I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to Shiloh, I will do now to the house that bears my name, the temple you trust in, the place I gave to you and your fathers. I will thrust you from my presence, just as I did all your brothers, the people of Ephraim. So, it wasn't the first time that the temple had been called a house of robbers, was it? It wasn't the first time. Okay? So, again, what does this whole event say about Jesus? What does this whole event say about Jesus? He doesn't tolerate sin. What else? He's not a respecter of persons. I don't care if, who you are. He's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't tolerate sin. He's a jealous God. His word doesn't change. All these... Where have you two been the last two weeks? I like it. How about Jesus' humanity? Does it show Jesus' humanity? He got angry, like Ed said a while ago. He got hangry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they weren't there. Yeah, he could have used a Snickers bar. The figs weren't there, so he was hangry, Lisa said. Yeah. Okay? Okay, let's look at verses 21 and 22. This is after he came out of the temple and they were out, out of the city. Went out of the city. And in the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree is cursed, that you cursed, has withered. So why was Peter amazed? Keep that thought. Keep, keep, keep that, 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 that. But keep going too. But I want you to keep that thought. <laughs> I didn't mean to disrupt you, but. We're going to get to that too. We're going to get to that too. We're going to, we're going to, no, we're going to get to that point a little bit later too. Okay? Okay? So Peter was amazed. Lord, here's the fig tree that you prayed over. It's dead. Yes. He had, he had seen 
loaves and fishes, you know, and all that. But yet he was still amazed. Poor Peter. Should Peter have been amazed at that? No, he really shouldn't have been. All right. Okay, here we go back to your point. Are you going to say something, Ida? What were you going to say? <laughs> okay, which brings me to the next question. You've been reading my notes now. I read yours all the time. You've been reading mine. That's okay. So what conditions for effective prayer are illustrated in this whole situation. What conditions for effective prayer are illustrated here? Yeah, and here's what I got from all of this as I was studying this. God means what he said. He cursed the fig tree, and lo and behold, the fig tree was cursed. God means what he said. Yeah, it's not that we're not mature. Is that we don't have enough trust. It's not that we're not mature believers, but a lot of times we don't trust in God. You know. Right? It? Yeah, because he never changes, right? Right, we've got to ask in Jesus' name. And he said that. Ask anything in my name, believing, and you shall receive. Now, we also know that there's God's perfect will, there's God's submissive will. Right? Am I right? So we've got to... Well, I like to pray for God's perfect will. I want his will to be done. Not mine, not Lighthouse, not Pastor Kevin's, not the deacons. I want... His will to be done for us here. Okay? Time to reflect a little bit. It's time to reflect a little bit. If you were a tree, if you were a tree, what would help you produce more fruit? If you were a tree, what would help you produce more fruit? Would it be pruning? That's his job. Would it be would it be would it be watering? Would it be staking? Would it be transplanting? Or would it be fertilizing? All of them. I'm going to give you a little clue. Lisa has a green thumb. She researches a lot of good stuff. She gave me some fertilizer for flowers. That if I hadn't put this stuff on it, it would have fertilized. Yes, we all need to be fertilized. And we all need to be, you know, pruned. Um, you know, trees don't, trees don't really produce a lot of fruit until they are pruned. Right? You've got to get rid of the dead wood. The dead parts. And watering and staking, all of that is important. So if Jesus came to Hurricane West Virginia to clean it up, where would he start? City Hall, the high school, 
church or your house? Something to think about. If Jesus came to clean up the city, where would he need to start? Okay? So what do you think, another, another question, what do you think is, the most, is most effective in changing the behavior of society for the good? Now, we know we're not going to change everybody, but what do you think is the most effective in changing the behavior of society for the good? Appeal to the people's sense of fairness. Work on changing the heart first. Change the law. Work quietly behind the scenes or overturning a few tables. Change, she said changing the heart first. I think that's probably the biggest thing that we need to look at first. We can't change people until their hearts are changed. And we can't change their hearts. First of all, we can't change the hearts unless we pray for them. And we can't change the hearts unless the Holy Spirit draws them. So it takes all of that to work at once. So it may sound like we're fighting a losing battle, but we're not. Who's the most powerful? God's the most powerful. He can do it all. But again, it's a matter of do we trust? Do we trust? Okay. I hope we've got a little bit out of it. I, I love the discussions. I love questions and answers. I, lo I love it. In the back and forth. Yeah, you can throw anything you want. Yes, we did. Yes, Ed. He cut the good grapes out of the bottom. And he got, uh, and got more grapes after he cut the good grapes off the bottom. He got more grapes off of what he did after he pruned it than he did. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. A um, couple of announcements, then we'll pray. Um, men's Bible study Monday. Ed's got that all taken care of. He's got, he's not, and you, ain't no need to be nervous. It's just men. It's just us. There's no need to be, you're fine. Uh, April's Closet on the 24th. Be praying for that. That is, not everybody's called for that ministry. I get it. Not everybody's called for that. But it is such an important ministry for us here. Because it gives us a chance, it, it gives me a chance when I when they say how you doing. It gives me a chance to say, "Too blessed to be depressed," and we'd like to invite you to church. It gives me a chance to do that. So pray for April's closet that you'll already prepare hearts. Moving on January on June the twenty fourth, God is not dead. God is not dead. One is what we're going to see. Now, mark this date on your calendar. How many of you have seen the Kendrick Brothers movies? Courageous, uh, Facing the Giants, Flywheel, um, uh, what's the other the last one? War Room, uh, in 
fireproof. And they got another one about uh, faith of the Father. Uh, there's another. Anyway, anyway, the Kendrick movies are, are good to see. On September the 9th, in the movie theaters here in the Valley, in, in 48 states, just came out today. It's a life, life mark, or the Kendrick brothers are coming out with another movie with Kirk Cameron. Uh, it's called Life Mark. L I F E M A R K. It's called Life Mark. And it's about pro life. And it's a true story. It's pro life and a true story. Um, so, Overcomer was the other one, yeah. So, it would be great if we could take a whole group of people from our church to see that. And it, and it, it is the truth. And if you can look, you, you can Google Life Mark and it'll tell you about, but I don't want to ruin it for you. Because I was excited. I even called Debbie on the phone. She was out, and I even called Debbie on the phone today. Say, hey, we've got another Kendrick Brothers movie coming out. So we'll put it on the calendar. Kirk Cameron was in Courageous. Fireproof. Kirk, Kirk Cameron was in Fireproof. No. That was his wife. He would only do that to his wife. Yes. He would not do that. Um, if you I read the background, Kirk Cameron got this uh, from a, the, true, the, the true life people that it happened to. They told him his story, and he asked them, can I make this into a movie? And he got with the Kendrick brothers, and it just blossomed from there. So, yeah, it, it, it better take a lot of hankies with you, because I've seen the previews. They are theologically strong. Yes, they are. And I, if I'm not mistaken, they're going to show them at all the places where the ark is. Like in, there's an ark in Kentucky, and there's an ark. They're building another ark somewhere. Else in Maryland or up in up in that area, I, thought, I understand. <laughs> yeah, Arkansas. Yeah, that's the only state mentioned in the Bible where no one went out of the Arkansas. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I hope you've got a little something out tonight. This is my last week. Um, Three weeks, I'll be coming back. We're going to go back into reshaping my lifestyle. And I'll have it in the bulletin while we're going to talk about the next one. I don't want to get you excited or less excited. I don't want to tell you because I want you to come back. That's the reason. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. So I want you to come back. Okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Uh, thank you for our discussion time tonight. The ideas that we've had. Uh, your word, thank you that you are powerful. We realize tonight how powerful you are through, and, and we realize that what you say you're going to do, you're going to do. So, Father, you said in Jeremiah 33, 3, if we will call on your name, call unto you, you will show us great and mighty things which we don't even know about. So we're asking you to do that tonight. Lord, here at Lighthouse, show us great and mighty things. Now, Father, we ask that you dismiss us in your love. And as we go out the doors, help us to realize that everybody we meet tomorrow is a divine appointment from you in Jesus' name. Amen.